It is common knowledge that under the transformative leadership of former President Goodluck Jonathan, Nigeria generated 4,568 megawatts of electricity, a triple of what was generated in 1999. Again, General Muhammad Buhari stated that a growing economy which the PDP inherited in 1999 has been destroyed within 15 years in office. On assumption of office, the Nigerian leader witnessed an improvement in the supply of electricity, as did other residents in their homes and in their businesses. We got to Abuja about this to find out where the extra electricity was coming from. Take a listen. Engineer Ruben Okeke, I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on State of the Nation. Let's begin by getting your assessment of what really is the bane of electricity supply and distribution in Nigeria. If you're talking about the bane of electricity or the power sector right now, presently in Nigeria, I will tell you that I must have to tell you that we are doing well. Electricity is improving very well for the first time we have reached 4,800 megawatts, which we have never reached for a very, I can't remember when we reached 4,800 megawatts. And not only you are talking of figures, you are seeing it. Most of the places where you go now, you are having between 15, 18, or even 20 hours electricity. Everywhere is enjoying electricity right now with only 4,400 4,800 megawatts. So I must have to tell you that what has been put in place, if that issue of gas is addressed today, we should be able to improve and get up to 6,000 to 7,000 megawatts. How do you suppose the issue of gas will be addressed? Well, the issue of gas, the gas is there. First of all, is to make sure that vandalization of the gas pipelines it's stopped, if it is possible, completely stopped. And once that vandalization is no longer there, you have easy flow of gas to all the power stations. And again, the gas companies, the people, the oil and gas companies, those who are responsible for extracting the gas and piping it, there's a lot of incentive that is being offered to them, which they are going to get. The master plan, the gas master plan is already, I think, is being implemented. These things are to show that the capacity or the generation capacity which we have, the fiscal infrastructure in generating electricity, you have the fuel to drive them, and that is gas. So I am very optimistic that once this issue of gas, the very first one is making sure that vandalization of gas pipeline is stopped. Then the other one is to encourage the manufacturers of these producers of this gas to continue, give them the proper incentive so that we will not have any problem shortage of gas. If you look at the stock capacity of the generation of the, uh, genera of the generators we have now from the plants, from the power stations which we have, the stock capacity with NIPP coming in, is getting up to 6,000, 7,000 megawatts. You see? And I tell you that if you can see the improvement in what we have with 4,800, imagine what it would be if we get to 6,000 megawatts. And that would tell you that we might not be having any interruption. For as long as vandalization of both the gas pipeline, vandalization of the facilities of transmission and distribution is stopped. So I should think that what the government is going to do is why expanding the fiscal infrastructure for the power sector, they will as well Cob, reduce mm. the tampering with facilities that will make this electricity to flow. As a training institution, how well are you positioned to improve on the power sector in the nation's economy today? You need competent people who will attend 
to the transmission lines. You need competent people who will make sure that this power comes into the, in your, the individual homes. People who can attend to fault. How do you get competent people? How does one, the competency of somebody improve? They have to come to where they will be trained. And for now, it is only National Power Training Institute of Nigeria, NAPTIN, that governments recognized and established on their own to take care of this workforce training. So even what you have now, the improvement you have now, is because of the number of people we've been able to train since 2009. Because you were having a lot of accidents before when we came in. And if you have snapping of a line touching the ground, and it does not trip at the source, cut off the electricity at the source, the whole of that ground is electrified. And not only that you are preventing accidents, you are equally disrupting people who are getting light from it. Speaking about infrastructure, where does Nigeria lie on the African continent as compared to other countries? Well, I, I think uh, Nigeria is doing, is doing well when compared. Remember, the infrastructure we have now, we're talking of the number of power stations. You, you know, government has put in about 10 power stations that have been, you know, um, sold, bidded for, brand new power stations. And we have well over 4,000 kilometers of 330 kV lines and 132 kV lines new ones, and almost 291 injection substations. These are brand new. And when all of them are commissioned to the system, these are what we're talking about infrastructure. I don't even think, for now, that there is any African nation who has that kind of, that quantity of brand new green infrastructure for production of electricity and transmission and distribution in their system. So if you ask the question, where is Nigeria standing as far as infrastructure is concerned? I can tell you, our stand is very, very good, and we're improving on it. What you should realize is that if you check 170 million people, it will look as if that infrastructure is not coming in. But with what the government, if you compare what is happening in Nigeria in the past sector for now with what is happening to other countries in Nigeria, in Africa, there's no, even South Africa is not near us. But because of our size, because of the number of people, because of the, the, the land mass, it will look as if it's a drop in the ocean, but something is happening.